Hello student, welcome to Manifested Online Classes. My name is uh, uh, Joseph Kemani. I want us to continue with the revision for May 2019. Uh, advanced uh, financial reporting and um, in this class I want us to look on the question which was uh, um, or the quest, uh, question number three of uh, May 2019 and that question had uh, two parts so we start with the, the first part um, that is part A Roman 1 and the question is with reference to international accounting standard uh, IS 19 employees benefit briefly explain the accounting treatment of a uh, defined uh, pension um, defined benefit pension uh, surplus into bracket uh, pension asset in the uh, financial statement of an employer. So what we are required um, uh, to do there is to explain uh, how an employer should account for a plan uh, asset. So this uh, first of all is uh, question three. Uh, question number three. Uh, question uh, three of uh, May 2019, May 2019. So in part A, Roman 1 of that particular question, it requires to explain, to explain the accounting treatment, the accounting treatment, a uh, treatment of uh, the plan uh, asset of the plan uh, asset by an employer by an employer an employer now uh, whenever now the employer is uh, preparing the financial statement at the end of the year the the plan asset or what in other terms we refer to as the, the the surplus or basically the defined benefit uh, pension surplus this always should be accounted for as part of the non-current uh, asset of which uh, first of all what we need to note is that uh, whenever now we have to compute uh, what if is the plan asset we take now the fair value the fair value of uh, the plan uh, asset plan asset at the end of the year and then to this we are supposed to less the present value of the defined uh, defined benefit obligation benefit uh, obligation now the difference between these two values between these two values is uh, what if is uh, the plan asset uh, the plan uh, asset uh, or what in other terms we refer to as the defined benefit uh, pension uh, surplus pension uh, surplus now this particular a plan asset at the end of the year it should be accounted for by the employer as part of the non-current uh, asset meaning that the employer when preparing the statement of financial position he should uh, treat this uh, or he should include this as part of the non-current uh, asset so that uh, uh, what was required in roman one of that uh, question in Roman 2, um, um, still it is a question from employees benefit and it reads, W limited, a public uh, limited company operator defined a uh, pension uh, plan for its employees. The present value of the future benefit obligation as at 1st January 2018 uh, was shillings at 38 million and the fair value of the plan asset as at the same date was a uh, 2860 million then you're given some information there we are told uh, further information relating to <coughs> the pension a uh, plan uh, for the year which added 31st december 2018 was as follows one we have the current service cost uh, which was 209 million two we have uh, the benefits uh, which were paid uh, to former employees which amounted to 242 million the contribution paid into the plan was 259 and then we have the present value of the pension uh, obligation as at the end of 2018 and then we have the fair value of the plan asset still at the end of 2018 and then we have some additional information one we are told that the interest cost uh, which is gross yield on blue chip uh, corporate boards uh, is at uh, the rate of uh, five percent and number two we are told on first january 2018 the pension plan was amended uh, to provide enhanced benefits uh, with effect from uh, that date the present value of the enhanced uh, a benefit is at first january 2018 was calculated by actuaries as a uh, shillings 110 million now what you are required in that question is a uh, 
we are required uh, to uh, uh, prepare the notes that is the required notes uh, to the uh, statement of comprehensive income and uh, the financial uh, that is statement of financial position to reflect the financial effect of the defined uh, pension uh, plan um, uh, plan in the year which added 31st uh, December 2018. Now, what you are required in that question uh, as a summary there is to compute now the figure to be taken to the a statement of comprehensive income and two is to compute now the figure which will be taken to the statement of financial uh, position. Now, as far as the uh, the employees benefit are concerned, there are three items uh, which we take to the statement of, uh, uh, or basically to the financial uh, statement. And those particular items uh, which are supposed to be uh, taken to um, the financial statement of the employer, as far as the employees benefit are concerned, um, the first item is something known as the net pension cost, uh, net pension cost, uh, pension cost. And two is something known as the net uh, actuarial, net uh, actuarial uh, gain, uh, stroke loss, stroke loss, of which now this is taken to the statement of comprehensive income as part of the other comprehensive income, where last this is taken to the statement of comprehensive uh, income as part of the expenses, a uh, part of the expenses. And three, um, the other item is uh, known as the net uh, pension, net pension uh, asset, uh, asset stroke net pension liability, of which now uh, this is supposed to be taken uh, to the statement of uh, financial a position. So <clears throat> what we need to do in that particular case is to compute those three items. To compute the net pension cost, uh, which will be an expense in the income statement, we compute the net actuarial gain or loss, uh, which will be taken to the statement of comprehensive income as part of the other uh, comprehensive income. And two is to compute the net pension uh, asset or liability. Now for us to do this, there is something we need to compute. We need first of all to compute uh, the actuarial gain or loss, both in respect to the pension uh, asset and also in respect to the pension hood and ability. Once now we have computed those two items, then we proceed and compute those three uh, uh, items uh, which we are required. So let's uh, start by computing the actuarial, the actuarial uh, gain, a stroke loss on the fair value, fair value of uh, the plan. Uh, asset of the plan asset. Now to compute this um, actuarial gain or loss in respect now to the fair value of the plan asset, um, in our case we need to have one column. So always we start with the, the fair value of uh, the plan asset, the fair value of the plan asset as at the start of the year. Now if we go back to the information which we have there in that question, uh, uh, specifically in the first paragraph, we are told um, in sentence two, the present value of uh, the future benefit obligation on 1st January 2018 was 38 million. And also we are told that the fair value <coughs> of the pension uh, assets as at the start of the year, uh, we are given that as an amount of 2860, 20, So therefore that is now the fair value of the plan asset as at the start of the year. Now to this, we should add a number of items. One we add something known as the expected return, expected return on plan asset, on plan uh, asset. And this will be computed based on the fair value of the plan at asset at the start of the year, uh, which is an amount of 2860. And then we are supposed now to multiply that with the what you're given in additional um, information not one, and that is the interest uh, uh, cost uh, which is gross yield on blue chip corporate board because that rate which you are given there five percent it is equivalent to the market interest rate so therefore uh, to compute the expected return on plan asset we should get five percent of a uh, third so we get uh, five percent of uh, that figure we compute five percent of that uh, which will be 0 0.05 times at uh, 2860 and that will give us an amount of uh, 143. Then to this still we are supposed to add the contributions uh, which were paid to the retirement benefit scheme by the employer. 
So we add the contributions uh, which were paid, contribution paid uh, into the plan, into the plan. The contributions which were paid into the plan were 259. And after adding those two uh, figures, then finally we less the benefits uh, which were paid. So in our case, what you're given there, you're given the benefits which were paid to former employees, uh, former employees, uh, employees, and that is an amount of uh, 242, 242. So let's compute um, uh, this figure. Whatever we are going to get here is usually the fair value of the plan asset S at the end of the year. So let's compute that. We have uh, 2860 uh, plus 143 uh, plus 259 minus 242 and that will give us 30, 20. So what that means is that um, the fair value of the plan asset based on the previous uh, actual assumptions now which were made should be, 20, uh, should be 30, 20 million. But um, what you need to note is that uh, a pension plan uh, at the end of uh, each financial year, it is supposed to engage a professional who is known as an actuary. Now, an actuary, uh, once now he is engaged by a retirement benefit scheme, he is supposed now to get or to value the plan asset which are there. And he will determine the fair value of the plan asset at the end of the year. So once now that valuation is done, we should compare those two values. So me that in our case, we should uh, take the fair value of the plan uh, asset, of the plan asset, as per the valuation now which was done at the end of the year. Now, in paragraph two, we are given the fair value of the plan as at the end of the year as an amount of uh, 31 13 million. So mean that as per the actual evaluation which was done at the end of the year, then the fair value of the plan asset was determined to be that one 13 million. So what we need to do is to determine, do we have an increase or do we have a, a decrease as per that actual evaluation uh, which was done? So in our case, if we are to compare these two values, we will be able to see that this was an increase. This was an increase. So therefore, let's get that difference. So we have uh, 30, 20 minus 31, 13. And that in our case, it will give us an increase of 93. So because this is an asset, anytime now we have uh, an increase in the value of an asset, once a valuation has been done, always that increase in the value of an asset will be an actuarial gain. So let's proceed and we compute uh, the actuarial uh, gain a uh, stroke loss on the present value, present value of uh, the plan obligation, the plan uh, obligation, obligation. So we still need to have uh, one column like that. So to compute this, we need to start with the present value of uh, the plan obligation, of the plan obligation as at the start of the year. That is balance brought down. And the, pre, uh, the, the plan obligation, this is uh, what in our question is known as the defined obligation. That is one and the same thing. Now, in the first paragraph, you're told the present value of uh, the future benefit obligation was an amount of 30, 80. Was an amount of 30, 80. And then to this, we should add a number of items. But before we do that, if we go to additional information number two, we are told on 1st January 2018, that is now at the start of the year, the pension plan was amended to provide enhanced benefit with effect from that date. That is now from 1st January 2018. And the present value of the enhanced benefit uh, on 1st January 2018 uh, was calculated by actuaries as shillings. Uh, 110. Now, that amount which you are given there as 110 is uh, what you refer to as the past service cost. The past service cost. And the effect of a past service cost is to increase the benefits now which will be payable to the employees in the, in the future. And once now it increases the benefits uh, which will be payable to the employees in the future, it will also now increase the obligation of a retirement benefit scheme to pay more benefit and therefore once we are told that this was to be increased so that means that we are going to increase this with an amount of 110 and which will be a past service cost 
Once we have that, then we proceed and we compute something known as the interest cost. Uh, interest cost, of which now the interest cost will be computed uh, on the rate which you are given in note one, which you have said is equivalent to the market interest rate. And then we should now compute this, or basically we compute that based on the present value of the plan obligation at the start of the year. But what you are told, according to <coughs> the actual valuation which was done, uh, at the start of the year, this amount is to be increased with 110. So therefore, we are going to compute this interest cost based on the total value there, <coughs> uh, which will be 3190, 3190. So we get the 5% of that figure there. That is the total figure of 3080 plus 110. So we get 5% uh, of that. That is that will give us 159.5 and we can just take that to the nearest whole number which will be 160 and then to this we add the current service cost a current service a cost now the current service cost you're given that is an amount of 209 is an amount of 209 and still now to this we less the benefits which were paid, the less benefits uh, which were paid. The benefits which were paid would be the same as, an amount, as we have used uh, there above, the amount of 242. Yes, so we compute what should be the present value of the plan obligation at the end of the year, which will be 3080 plus 110 plus uh, 160, 160 uh, plus 209 minus 242 and that will give us that 317 so and that means that uh, the present value of the plan obligation is at the end of the year based on some of the previous actuary assumptions uh, which have been made should be 3317 now what we need to do is then to compare that we compare that with the present value of the obligation that is a plan obligation the plan uh, obligation as at the end of the year as at the end of the year and we have that in uh, parag uh, the paragraph two which are given as an amount of uh, 31 uh sorry that should be 3360 3360 uh, so we compare that so what <coughs> we have here is the present value of uh, the plan obligation as per the actual valuation which was done at the end of the year. So what we need to do <coughs> is to determine whether we have an increase or a decrease. And basically, if now we are to compare those two values, we will be able to see that we have an increase from 3317 to 3360. Uh, so we get the increase, uh, which in our case will be 43 which will be 43. So now that increase, take into account this is a liability. If now the value of liability increases, then that should be a loss. That should be a loss. So therefore, in our case, that would be an actuarial loss. That would be an actuarial loss, uh, which now is an uh, increase. Now, <coughs> having computed that actuarial gain um, and also loss, in respect now to the plan obligation and basically the fair value of the plan asset, I think now we can compute those three items, the net pension cost, the net actuarial gain or loss, and also the net pension uh, uh, asset or liability. So let's start by computing the net pension uh, cost, net pension cost, uh, costs. And basically, you say that this net pension cost is the amount now which will be taken to the income statement of the employer as an expense, as an expense. Now, this uh, is computed <coughs> uh, by um, taking a number of items. We have a number of items here which should be taken to the income statement as either incomes or expenses. First of all, starting with what we have here, uh, these three items, that is the past service cost, the interest cost and uh, the current service cost, this should be taken to the income statement and basically those are the items of expenses. Uh, here, uh, what is taken to the income statement is uh, what is known as the expected return on plan asset. Basically, that is a form of 
an income. So therefore, we should take these three uh, items of cost and then we offset that income. The net amount we are going to get is known as the net pension uh, cost. So let's start by having our three uh, costs here or our three uh, expenses. First of all, we have the past service cost. Past service cost is an amount of uh, 110. We also have the interest cost, uh, interest cost, which is an amount of 160. We have the current service cost, current service uh, cost, uh, which is an amount of uh, 209. Still, that is uh, a cost or an expense. And still, this should be taken to the income statement, but this is an income. So, take into account is an income, it will be offset against those expenses. So, we have expected return. Uh, on plan asset, uh, on plan asset, and that is an amount of 143. So taking into account that is an income, we offset it from those costs, and whatever we get now here is uh, what we refer to as a net pension uh, cost, and that is now the amount now which an employer should take now to the income uh, statement. So let's uh, compute that uh, figure there. Compute that uh, figure, and that will be given by 110. Uh, plus 160 plus 209 minus 143. So mean that our net pension cost or the amount now which will be taken to the income statement as an expense will be an amount of 336. Then two, we have said that we should compute uh, the net actuarial, the net actuarial gain, uh, gain stroke uh, loss. And this amount of net actuarial gain or loss, when preparing now the statement of comprehensive income, that is classified or should be treated as part of other comprehensive income. So we compute that. And uh, to compute that figure, we are supposed to take uh, this uh, actuarial gain and what we have there as actuarial loss, and we get a net amount. We get a net amount. Now, as far as uh, the uh, uh, plan asset are concerned, we have an actuarial gain, so mean that we have actuarial gain on plan asset, on plan uh, assets, and that is an amount of 93. So any gain, we take it here as a positive. We take it as a, a positive. Then here, we have an actuarial loss. We have an actuarial loss in respect to the plan obligation. Because this is a loss, we definitely deduct it from our gain. We uh, deduct it from our gain. Uh, our loss is uh, 43. So we deduct it from our gain. And the net amount now which we will be getting there will be 50. And that will be a net actuarial. will be a net actuarial gain. Because you can see that our gain here is more than the loss. So the net amount will be a uh, uh, again, which we have said when preparing the statement of comprehensive income, that is part of other comprehensive income. And finally, we compute now the net pension asset or liability, which will be taken to the statement of financial uh, position of which to compute that is very simple. What we do is that we take this um, fair value of the plan asset at the end of the year, and basically this is a component of a uh, non-current asset, and then we compare that with the present value of the obligation still at the end of the year, and that is a component of non-current liability. We get the net amount, which will either be a net pension uh, asset or a net pension liability. So let's compute that. That is the net uh, pension uh, asset, net pension asset stroke liability, uh, stroke liability. So we have uh, one column there. So we start with the fair value of uh, the plan asset, a uh, plan asset. And basically, in this case, I've said that we should take now the fair value of the plan asset as at the end of the year. That is an amount of uh, 31, 13. And then we compare that with the, the present value, the present value of obligation of obligation still at the end of the year and that is an amount of 3360 so we deduct that from our asset 
our asset. So we have 31, uh, 13 minus 33, 16. And in our case, that is 247. Uh, that is 247. <coughs> 247 and the 247 here will be a negative figure <coughs> if it is a negative figure that means that the plan obligation is more than the plan asset if that is the case then that figure will be known as a net pension uh, liability a net pension liability so when the, the employer is preparing the statement of financial position at the end of the year that will be taken there as part of non-current what liabilities as part of non-current liabilities. So that uh, what was required in uh, that particular uh, part, that is uh, Roman 2 of uh, that particular question. So let's just take a short break and then we come back, we look on uh, part B of that question. <laughs>